Okay, I'm going to start my speech in three, two, one. The opening government doesn't really define how this feminist movement will work. But firstly, we have to underline this word aggressively. In this case, we will not oppose this K-pop industry in a way that makes them look bad or in an anarchy way. In fact, we have to address that aggressively here means strictly that we are from government probably opposed to K-pop industry. So, ladies and gentlemen, K-pop has been a trend since a few years until now, and we do believe that many people from different countries have got to, the, to this trend, starting from the culture, the food, the idols, and the music itself. So we might be only know this trend if euphoria without knowing the fact that this K-pop industry has a dark side too, deep down inside. So starting from hard and cruel training that the idols must don to be the idols, such as they have to do some kind of diet to achieve certain, certain level standards that made by the industry. Therefore, in this case, this will make the idols think like, am I good enough to be an idol? Am I thin enough? Should I go extra mile to achieve the body that the industry wants me to be in considering that uh, there is a standard that uh, put, put by the management agencies that, that, um, uh, that the idols must reach to look good. So not just the body in the, in the particular, there is a standard that required for someone to join the idols, like white skin, glowing faces, long hair, etc. So if the opposition team said that K-pop comes to give more option to widen our perspective of diversity, K-pop creates more innovative, different, and diversity of beauty by, uh, but all the figures, all, all the idols, idols are, are, are the same. So we don't see the dark skin existing in K-pop. So Where's the diversity like the opposition team said before? So, in fact, it just straightened our perspective. It is straightened, straightened our point of view, makes us thinking about one absolute standard of beauty, which is white skin, which is thin and slim body, which is glowing faces and tall body and etc. As far as K-pop concerned, ladies and gentlemen, stars getting plastic surgery isn't exactly a breaking news again, breaking news headline, but, K-pop stars take it to another level because the standards that put by the management agencies that indirectly forces idols to do a plastic surgery, if they think their faces is too round, for example, they can get that fixed easily. Of course, all it takes is an extremely painful procedure in which the jaw is broken and shaved into a V-shape. So to look more charming and beautiful by the standards that uh, they put the theirs, uh, they put uh, from their self. So, indirectly, the opposition is hopeless to fight against the problem that has been living with us by saying that there is no need to put an effort to make a movement to oppose the K-pop industry. So, by saying this, I concern that there is still a way to, for us to do. There is still a way for us to overcome this problem, overcome this endless cruelty and the dark side, the dark side of the K-pop industry itself, ladies and gentlemen. So, we will prove that we have a good mechanism as follows. So, the first one is, we will strictly make a constitution that handles this kind of matter in this case is idols' rights in K-pop industry, including their rights to speak up in front of public, their, their rights to speak up uh, freely, revealing the truth, considering what really happens in the industry, is the ANC management forces the idols to shut their mouth up, to, uh, to keep their mouth uh, shut, to, uh, to keep their mouth shut, so they don't, they don't reveal the truth um, uh, the truth in, in, in the agency. So, if they want to get extra money, also their freedom, freedom to protect their privacy in any circumstances, regardless the market demand, such as if the fans want to know about the relationship status and the idols wants to hide it, and then it shouldn't, shouldn't matter as what is happening in the status quo right now. So, the second one is, we will also build a law agency that specializes in taking care of this matter, so on and so forth, so that we will be the first people to come for them when they need us. Um, we, we will be the, uh, the people that um, overcome their problem, firstly. So the third one is, if there is any certain management agent still, agencies still limits or even shots their this idol's rights, then there will be a penalty, such as we will suspend 
the agency from any activities including the show performances, including the new member recruitment and album debut and any, any regular activities that um, used, used to be uh, imposed by them. So by imposing these new regulations, the management agencies would would probably limit their move and their actions to, uh, to the idols, considering the risk of being banned and the penalty that they will receive if they break their rules. So, therefore, the numbers of idols that have recently uh, going through mental health because so many problems would, would possibly be reduced. So, so, as far as this motion is concerned, I am proud to propose. Thank you. I'm going to start my speech in three to one. Ladies and gentlemen, status quo from opening government is only beauty standardization. And also this is supported by opening opposition. Meanwhile, ladies and gentlemen, understand this, that there is more urgent status quo in this debate. And that is actually how this K-pop industry treat these idols. Ladies and gentlemen, the K-pop industry is also known for the pressure it puts on its idols to maintain a wholesome image in front of the media. You know that K-pop artists are called idols in Korea and you know that they are like uh, they they must be seen as the perfect as the ideal and also performance at all times even including their privacy and also in their personal lives female k-pop stars are expected to be cute and lovely while being obedient to public reception or in this matter we can say that the k-pop industry indirectly makes these idols to be slave they struggles like understand this that the status quo right now is that it's not only about beauty standardization that we are concerning ladies and gentlemen it's about mental health issue cyberbullying and even the romantic relationship which many k-pops are banned are banned from doing by their management so this is more urgent to human rights ladies and gentlemen and this is why we are very proud and we will strictly uh, we will strictly oppose uh, oppose industry k-pop uh, from doing this kind of men in general even ladies and gentlemen female k-pops are idols bodily are heavily regulated as what my uh, as what my member government has explained you before by their employers with the expectation that they conform to certain image norms and their bodies are heavily sexualized by fans and as my uh, member government has explained you before that even if their face is round if their face is dark if their face is not uh, it's not according to the what society or what or what uh, what the norm is right now then they will have to uh, to do the plastic surgery and also the problem is k-pop's treatment of women this is what is the concerning of status quo right now ladies and gentlemen and the opening government and also the opening opposition fails to underline and also to highlight the status quo ladies and gentlemen and and uh, and though widely entertaining, the general serves as a current testimony to the ways in which young Korean ladies, despite being among the world's most educated, are objectified, vilified, and legally enslaved by a multi-billion-dollar industry that maximizes outrageous profit from their exploitation, ladies and gentlemen. And what is really happening? The impact is that this will lead to suicide. And let's take a look at the example one of uh, twenty-five year. Uh, uh, year old uh, artist or singer uh, from uh, from Korea, South Korea named Suli uh, because of this beauty standardization because of the pressure that they got from the agency and also the K-pop industry and then she was then and then she decided herself to be different to be different from what the society is told about and then and then it was led her to suicide because she was not she was not strong enough to receive so many cyber bullying to receive so many uh, so many abandonment from other people around her and this is also why I am from the WIP government we are from the government proudly uh, proposed the mechanism that my member of government has explained you before ladies and gentlemen and this doesn't only happen to female ladies and gentlemen male stars are certainly exploited too 
But female artists suffer heavy double standards, especially when it comes to pay and their personal lives are jail. And speaking of beauty standardization, because of the government, also the opposition that they keep talking about, they keep blabbering about, this beauty standardization come from normalization from fans of what so-called rich demand by the opposition team. They call it a demand. They have normalized that this kind of thing, ladies and gentlemen. They they just normalize okay that uh, the the society happening right now should be thin, should be what? Why is this happening? Why this keeps happening? Because they normalize it, okay? They normalize it, they portray it as an okay, if it's a, a K-pop idols, then it should be what? And this is why the the fem, uh, the feminist movement should uh, should uh, should aggressively, should strictly oppose to that kind of thing. So this will be stopped. So that this will not happen anymore in the future, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, also that K-pop needs uh, to drastically change its source so that gender equality can be attained in the industry at, by the mechanism that the member member government has previously explained you explicitly. The opening government also doesn't seem to really understand what this debate is about because they keep laboring of how this K-pop uh, industry affects certain person, of how they like the uh, affects uh, to a certain uh, to certain person to have image of a glorifying. So to sum up, opening government doesn't win this case. Ladies and gentlemen, the second is the opposition team said that the existence of this K-pop industry will give more options of the preference of the beauty. And let me tell you that this is truly false. Because as I told you before, in the K-pop, they, they even have certain norms of uh, this K-pop idols must be uh, must be portrayed in the media just for the sake of popularity, fame, and also money. Ladies and gentlemen, let me emphasize you before. Also, the opposition team strongly believes that by stating that it's unnecessary, it's also hopeless to fight for this motion because the K-pop industry does this and that just for the sake of global supply and demand to fulfill the ratings. But ladies and gentlemen, understand this. Okay? Okay, we don't blame the K-pop industry for uh, 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 for uh, for uh, for what they do uh, for the sake of the uh, ratings. It's really okay for you guys to do that. But we really condemned in this case of the debate today is that how you treat your idols, how you treat them, how you how you most likely to kill them with your uh, with your behavior and they, uh, with your uh, with your process. So uh, uh, indirectly, the opposite team saying that they don't care about the sanity of the idols also they accuse us uh, they accuse us by purposing this motion means that we blame k-pop industry well it's not let me tell you that it's not we don't restrict how this industry to have that norms to increase their ratings but understand this that we condemned this cruelty of how they actually force and also how they put the name as an obligatory which then this is an exploitation ladies and gentlemen so opposition teams again fail to defeat this motion and i am from the government uh, from the government side of the house we are truly proud and also thankful to propose to this motion with the mechanism and also argumentation uh, brought by two of us thank you